Is the earlier the better? Should we expose our children to as many different languages as possible from very early on? And how long will it actually take for them to become natively fluent in the target language or languages? Well, about the native fluency, etc., I have another video about that. And we also need to define what fluent actually means. Hi, I'm Ute and I help multilingual families maintain their languages and cultures whilst adding new ones at Ute's International Lounge. So what does fluent actually mean? With fluent, we usually mean that we want our children to become very confident, like someone who speaks the language from a very early childhood on. What we mean with that is that the pronunciation of sounds, the intonation, the articulation and the use of the language should be so good that locals of places where this language is spoken would not label our children as foreigners. This is a very high expectation, but we all know that sounding like the others means also to have higher chances to be accepted as part of the group and it opens doors. Let's see what this has to do with the earlier the better and also what this has to do with the critical period hypothesis. We know that there is a golden window to acquire language. What is important to know though is that this golden window is about the first language. It doesn't necessarily apply to the additional languages. So with regards to the first language or languages a child acquires, the child should be exposed to a rich linguistic environment, which means that people should be speaking with the child, engage in communication, connect with the child through language from day one. As this window, how it's called, of acquiring how to use language and make sense of it, closes between age six and 13 if we want our child to be able to form sentences. Here I refer to studies by Curtis 1977 and Davis 1947, for example, who studied how socially isolated children acquired language after six or 13 years of not being talked with. And then the term that it was used in this context was abused in the sense of neglected. So all this applies for the first language or languages. So for any additional language, this golden window is not closing because as the name says additional means that it is added to the first language or languages so our child usually already has acquired at least the basics of the first language or languages and can build on them please watch the interview we had about this topic with professor shiro ojima at raising multilinguals live now what about the second language or additional language? Is the earlier the better? The answer is yes and no. It depends on what we are focusing on. If it is about sounding like a native speaker, then again, who is a native speaker, right? We all have some kind of accents. We're coming from the north of the country or the south or east or west. We all have regional accents and variants of the language and different ways to articulate sounds and uh, these vary actually from person to person but let's say that we want to sound like it's our first language then the earlier is indeed better because on a phonetic level when it comes to distinguishing sounds and the articulation of them young children acquire languages in the most spontaneous naturalistic way and implicitly. They echo what they hear, they try to articulate what they hear, and of course it takes time to articulate and pronounce certain sounds or all the sounds of a language and sound chains, but still, young children pick up what they are exposed to and it's actually everything they are exposed to. Think about it this way. They need to gather a great variety and number of elements, build their mental grammar themselves. It's like building something from scratch without instruction or knowledge. It takes time and it means that many mistakes need to be made to find out how everything works. It's a learning by doing. So a three or four year old child will still be building the first language or the second and third language too. It's like having Lego pieces in different colors. Each color stands for a language and a variety of shapes. The shapes stand for the role of the word. For example, a noun, a verb, an adjective, an adverb, an article, pronoun, etc. So 
our youngest ones proceed by trial and error. They try out what fits, what doesn't, and adjust until they get it right, which means until a person in their life recognizes, as the say also, understands what they are saying and what they mean. Now, the advantage of older children now when learning in additional languages is that their approach to the new language allows them to identify patterns of the language quicker. They are faster than very young children because it's based on what they already have learned. They already have recognized and, and built up these patterns from their first languages. So they can recognize certain underlying rules, if you want. Older learners are tendentially explicit learners. They usually learn in formal settings and it takes less time. The learning is more structured and there is a little bit less from trial and error. So these older learners are quicker at learning about morphology and syntax and also vocabulary. They might struggle though with the pronunciation of new sounds, but there again, if they have been exposed to other languages earlier in life, chances are much higher that they will manage to adjust their pronunciation to the new languages too. So for example, if I already know that R can be pronounced R, L, and R, and the new language uses R as well, I can just take over what the skill to articulate that sound from the one language to the next one. Think about it this way. A very young learner is still learning how to connect objects of the world with sound chains, which are words, and this in maybe two or three languages. And they can't read yet, so they need to hear them many, many times and in different contexts to understand that apple is a word and that the apple is green is a sentence of four words and that these four words can be used in different contexts like the car is red or the curtains are yellow that the singular is formed with is and the plural with are and that to curtain singular we can add an s when it is about more than one curtain etc for both Young and older learners, the acquisition and learning takes time. It is a myth, though, that after age 11, one cannot learn a new language up to a high level of proficiency. There are enough of us out there who prove the opposite. So, the earlier is better for articulating sounds, and it gives more time to reach a high level of proficiency. But the later can get you there quicker. And if you continue learning, you can also attain high levels of proficiency if you start with the additional language later. So it's up to every single person to create an environment, a context where language learning is a lifelong pleasure. What is your experience and when have you acquired and learned your language or languages? And are you still improving your language skills in all your languages or some of them? Please share in the comments. And if you like this video, please subscribe to be notified whenever I publish a new video.